I'm in Japan, and I finally found it. I found Borgar. Welcome to Osaka. Me and Tony are going to go out exploring a little bit tonight. I don't know how much exactly we're going to get to see, but we're going to go and try to go to Dotonbori, which is Osaka's nightlife district here, and it's also very bustling during the daytime as well. Tokyo is big, but Osaka has kind of its own unique culture around it. Um, we might see some food stuff. There's actually one long uh, shopping district that's just like one long hallway it goes on for over a mile, maybe even closer to two miles. So there's a lot of different sites to see here, and it's just kind of got a similar uh, culture to Tokyo, but it's got its own unique feel to it. So we're going to be able to kind of compare and contrast and see which one we like better. Um, we had a lot more specific plans for Tokyo. Uh, Osaka, we still have a lot of stuff that we want to fit in. There's definitely some historical stuff, and there's one in particular kind of special thing that we would like to do uh, probably in, over the next few days, um, probably on the 30th. Today is the 27th. But that all said, uh, we're probably going to go out here soon and just see things for ourselves a little bit, and if I see anything cool, I'll film it. But if not, uh, tomorrow will be the day when we start really kind of getting into the filming stuff. We are here at the Glico Running Man statue in Osaka. It is probably the most famous part of Osaka downtown uh, for all you guys to see. What's really cool, and I didn't actually know this, I knew that it was very famous, but if you look, it's actually over water. Um, there's a kind of a lake and a little bridge over across where people go and hang out. Got cruises on a boat right behind me as we go and, and do this here. Um, up at the like overpass area because we're actually kind of not under a bridge but we're going uh on kind of a, a sea level platform if you will um, once we go back up to the main platforms you can see the downtown you can see all the shops you can see all the food options and it's uh getting late it's around 6 p.m i could be wrong about that but i'd say it's roughly there um could be a little later could be a little earlier it's hard to keep track of time when you're traveling around japan in two weeks but this is the most famous part of Osaka, but it is not the only flashy part. And let's see some other flashy parts of Osaka. I'm gonna look back and pronounce it right. Saibashi Suji. And this is a really well-known shopping complex in Osaka. It's a hallway, it actually continues on behind us, but there are hundreds of stores. Everything from little cafes, there's actually a Peter Pan cafe going on. It's a limited time thing right now. But it is a couple miles long. We've been walking back and forth a bit for uh, probably like an hour now. Heck, there's even a little Gashapon store. There's a couple of them. But I went to that, got a couple little goodies in here. Just so much to do and see. Um, <laughs> a lot more than just the uh, Running Man sign would have you believe. There's more than just that here. Uh, we've been in a couple shops now. There's actually, inside the stores, there's malls. There's just so many stores that it's absurd. I've never seen so many stores in my entire life. Um, and we are going to continue going down the streets. However, where are we going to eat? Are we going to get some takoyaki? Are we going to get some ramen? Well, first and foremost, we're going to see if Shake Shack is open. Not just because we want American food, but because Tony has not tried it. And it's the city staple in the United States. So we'll see if it holds up here in Osaka, Japan. How long has it been? <laughs> Years. They just don't change it now? now it's no, like it's a uh, like it's a staple. I'm sure uh, Glico pays for it, but yeah. <laughs> What's up guys? We actually just got back from an evening stroll around Osaka. 
it's beautiful, but we went out kind of late, so things were already closing by the time that we got there. Um, we did have Shake Shack. It was very good, as I'm sure you saw. Um, but we we're actually back at our hotel, and I was looking because our room doesn't have uh, AC going. It has heat going. Um, so I was thinking about if that could be changed, and I wanted to check, like, the Google reviews to see if that was, like, a common complaint and whether anything could be done about that. However, in looking at the reviews, I learned something about this building. So it's a big cylinder-shaped hotel. If I can find a good image that shows that, I'll put it here for you guys. But it's, it's a big cylinder, right? And so um, we're actually out looking on one part of the building, but you could probably go around across from our room, and there's another room that has a completely opposite view ours. Uh, it, it's a complete circle. It's not a big box like most hotels are, which is really cool. Except for the fact that uh, it's actually closing soon, this hotel, in March of 2023. Um, they're going to be renovating the building, and it's a large building from scratch. And that's going to go until 2030. So we are actually among some of the last guests, really, here um, before this place shuts down for a few months. And um, cherry blossom season is actually in the latter half of spring, so it'll be closing before cherry blossom season. So it'll be interesting to see... Um, how that renovation goes for that in particular and, and the years to come. I don't know exactly how they're going to be making money during that time. Um, I, I hope for their sake that they just have a ton of money stored up and that the renovation goes really well. But uh, yeah, seven year renovation. I've never heard of such a thing before. Um, but they said the Maru building, which I think is not just the hotel, but it's like the whole building. They're just starting from ground zero. So Anywho, I just found that online. I thought it was a tidbit worth sharing as I look over the night view here, which is pretty pretty insane, honestly. All right, so we are here at the Osaka Aquarium. Um, I've actually already gone inside, and let me tell you, there are some beautiful shots in here. We saw this online, and it said, yeah, you should probably like check this out. It was actually a bit out of our way. We had to take a subway line that was not included with our pass. It was not very expensive, it was like two bucks essentially. So we spent the extra money and boy am I glad we did. Um, it only took us probably an hour to get through everything and see everything, um, but the exhibits were absolutely beautiful. Saw a lot of fish that I had seen before and some things that were a little uh, out there.
Everybody, welcome to Universal Studios Japan. <laughs> I'm getting video footage of us walking towards it. <laughs> Hearing the minion sing is so funny. <laughs> well, we made it in. It was a lottery system, and guess what? We lost the lottery, so I said, heck with it. We're buying express passes, which were like $140 a piece for the both of us. And we are officially in Super Nintendo World. Absolutely insane. I I can't believe we made it in, honestly. It's remixed music from Yoshi's Island.
皆様のご理解とご協力。I know it's dark out, but I have to point it out. Minion flag next to the Japan flag. Ah, patriotism at its finest. Alright, so it is New Year's Eve, and we are in Kyoto.